Well, everybody, welcome again to another installment of Bible in a Year. And this is day seven. We started on Monday, and here we are on day number seven, May 17th. Um, and uh, I'm outside here, I'm listening to all these birds. It's amazing. It's amazing. All the birds, and they're singing. They're singing to each other. Amen. And um, this uh, today's readings from Genesis 22, 23, and 24, there's so much in each uh, of these groups of chapters. There's no way, of course, we would be able to cover all the details. So I'm just, as I do on a daily basis, highlight uh, some things that I feel like the Lord just kind of spoken in my heart about. And chapter 22, of course, is the first chapter, and it talks about, of course, the offering of Isaac. When you think about what took place and how long and it took for them to have Isaac, and of course some of the challenges that came as a result of of uh, Abraham going into, into uh, Sarah's handmaid Hagar, and all those challenges. Finally, God's getting uh, Abraham to a point where he is proving or testing. When you read the first verse. The Bible says, and it came to pass after those things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Behold, uh, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And verse 2, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So now he's going to test his love. You know, when we read the New Testament, Matthew 10, verse 37, uh, I quote this a lot because I see that there's a lot of challenges with families and uh, people who are Christian who maybe allow their family to, um, how can I say it, test them on their love for God. You know, the Lord's not saying we shouldn't love our family members, uh, but at the same time, our love for God should be so much greater than our love for our own flesh and blood. And he says, Jesus said, Jesus. And he that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So God's going to test our love, test our faithfulness to him. And uh, yes, you ought to love your, uh, your, your children and your parents and all those earthly relationships, but not as much as you love God if you're a Christian today. So God tests Abraham. You know, this is the promised son. Now he's asking him to sacrifice. Of course, God didn't approve of human sacrifice. But God is testing. In the first verse, it says that God did tempt. And some people struggle with that because they don't understand that. You need to study the Word of God. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible explains that. That's why you got to compare Scripture with Scripture. As the prophet Isaiah said, line upon line, precept upon precept. And in verse... Um, 17 of Hebrews 11, by faith Abraham when he was tried. So God clearly states, he, he defines for us what he means by tempt in that passage. So we've got to study the scripture, study the so ourselves approves them to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He says he offered up Isaac. So God tested him. God was testing him. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, I don't have time to get into this, but it, it's you can go online and you'll find a lot of websites that will give you all um, the types of Christ that are found in, in Isaac. Uh, it's just amazing, especially when we think about the location of this in Mount Moriah in verse 2. Um, and even at the end of this, in verse 14, the Bible says, and the, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said unto thee, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So that Mount Moriah, if you do the study, it's the same area where Jerusalem is. You know, that's where uh, David ended up behind the threshing floor. And of course, after he had, uh, God had judged him and the nation for his uh, numbering, uh, and God worked through all of this. It was just an amazing thing. Interesting, also in verse 8, and I believe it's very unique in the King James Bible. You don't find this uh, in other Bibles. Um, the Bible says, And Abraham said, My son, again, 
Isaac's asking, hey, Dad, you know, we've got the wood, we've got the fire, where's the lamb? And um, verse 8, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. And God did provide himself. God became flesh 2,000 years ago and was born in Bethlehem's manger. God inhabited that body that was prepared for him. And he lived a perfect, sinless life. And God did on Mount Moriah, Golgotha, which is, a, again, an extension of that mountain range, of that ridge of, of, of mountains there in Jerusalem there. And uh, so he did. Interesting, of course, he says... Um, in the verse 5, as you've studied and read this today, you'll see Abraham said unto the young man, Abide ye here well with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. And notice, he says, and come again to you. So he says, we will. We will come. I and the lad, we're going to go, we're going to worship, and we're going to come back. Wait a minute. Did not he say he was going to obey God, and God says to sacrifice your son? Well, again, Hebrews 11 is kind of a key. A lot, a lot of the New Testament is the key to unlocks the old and so forth. And um, he says in Hebrews 11, verse 18, And of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now watch this, verse 19 of Hebrews 11. Counting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in the figure. You know what, Abraham believed? I'm going to trust God. I'm going to obey God. I love my son. He's my only begotten son, even as Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He even believed that if God did allow him to go through all of this, that God would even raise Isaac up from the dead. Wow. Wow, what a picture, what a picture. Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again the third day. Amen. Listen, there's so much more in these passages, and I hope these things have been a blessing. It's been a blessing to me. It's a, ble it's a blessing to me to know that even families are doing this together, going through the Bible together. And again, it, it, it is a three or four chapters a day. We'd love to have you join with us on this journey in Bible in a Year. And uh, please, please, just take your time and ask God speak to, to speak to your heart and to help you through this journey. Um, and that God would uh, touch your heart and that you would, uh, um, God just would give you something fresh and new each and every day. Amen. And uh, so anyway, well, listen, God bless you on this Sunday. Looking forward to our services throughout this day, of course, online. And uh, we, will, we will meet with you again. Amen.